the terms, comments, and stories you're about to hear may not be suitable for some. Listener discretion advised. All right now, boys and girls, we want to introduce... Please allow me to adjust my pants. Adults, please. Adults, please. Turn it up. Run. Run as fast as you can. I'm going to give you what you need. Get ready for BAM Radio. Let me do it one more time. Is Radio BAM? Fucking idiot. What the hell am I talking about? It's Radio BAM. You're here live, or are you? Yes. We're here joined tonight for this holiday festive radio broadcast with Fireside Rake. Oh, don't eat meat in the house. <laughs> no more effing Novak, of course. I can't take him another second. Yeah. Rabbi Roberto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, are you done? Put those kittens on my thigh again. I'm fucking dickhead deco. Oh, wait, no, not that much cursing, sorry. Frickin', and, uh, of course, lovely Bam, we are here. What's going on? And we have Ryan Dunn here. This is his first time on the radio show. And, uh -huh. uh, hey, Deco, what did you want to get off your chest? Uh, oh. Uh. First off, I want to get this pearl necklace off my chest. I got it for Christmas. The Christmas didn't even Wait, come. What, were, you, what, were you driving home from the King of Prussia Mall or something? You got frustrated with the Christmas traffic? Yeah, all right. I got problems with the mall. Some fat and handicapped lady <laughs> tried to smash me in her mommy's minivan, which, whatever, I'm not going to get too much into that. I wanted to kill her. I cursed her out and made sure she could read my lips. And then those filthy people in the middle of the mall at the kiosks. You know those bastards? Oh, yeah, yeah. And when you walk by, they always want to touch your hands. God forbid if Novak was there and tried to touch my hands, I'd run down the hall. But they always come Don't up lie. to you. They all sound like damn Dracula. Excuse me. <laughs> May I ask you a question? No, you fucking already just did. <laughs> I can't stand those assholes, dude. They sell the worst shit, too. Can I ask you a question? Just ask it. I know. You just ask me a question, I'll slice your throat and send you it. I got trapped in one of those kiosks once because of some lotion he was trying to sell. I'm like, I've never used lotion in my life, and I don't want any parts of it, but he just would simply wouldn't let me go. I'm like, I don't use lotion, I never will, and uh, I gotta go now. No, 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 just try this thing. I'm like, no, I don't use lotion, bro. My friends don't use it, I don't use it. But you use cologne, though, right? But Rab used it in my basement. <laughs> you know, the one person you never want to go Christmas shopping with is Bam. We go to the mall yesterday, it turns into City Walk. Remember that, Don? Remember City Walk? I don't want to talk about City Walk. That Dude, was, I, it happened yesterday. We're, I can not go to the mall anymore. No, I turn around to see 80 million 12 year old teeny boppers screaming his name. <laughs> we're going to get a lot of stuff done at the mall, a lot of Christmas shopping. We're yeah, going to be I'm, productive. Sure, I'm, I'm sure you're on a mission. We ended up in the bar drinking because we had to hide, yeah. so we got nothing but loaded. Yo, at least you didn't have that security guard from freaking City Walk <laughs> saying he's going to help you out. <laughs> he oh wasn't even God. a security guard. He just was an imposter. Tell us yeah, about it, Don. Tell us about the City Walk story right after I just tell you that as soon as we walked into the mall, it was kind of dumb of us to go to the mall um, on Saturday as, like, it's major Christmas shopping going on. So uh, we walk in, instantly get recognized by about 15 teeny boppers. They all start screaming my name, and they each in individually want a picture. So I'm, like, trying to walk and take the photo. Meanwhile, this guy's like, ladies, we got a meeting. I'm like, what kind of meeting are we having at the King of Prussia Mall while we're Christmas shopping? Like, he, he tells just, me. He's like, Novak, make sure that if they come up, tell them we got a meeting. So I start with the meeting, that. and then he makes me look like the asshole. Like, I'm pulling away because he's like, no, Novak, it's cool. So I I look like the fucking dipshit. Well, who enough. cares if you look like an asshole? You've been on heroin for 10 years. For <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. cut you a break. No, I'm not, and I have a... a so anyway, I, we, we hide in this place called Pacific Blue. It's a sushi joint. Oh, yeah. I get noodles. I swear to God, I got a half a bite of noodles per... per per bite and somebody would come in new and want an autograph and then the whole army navy uh academy came in and oh. all wanted pictures like, so, so, so we all join up for a big picture I this turned out to be like a sexy party <laughs> well it got even sexier done and you'll like this because i believe you're a little homophobic or homo sometimes <laughs> i stand on the bar you you got that you both you got that huh Sometimes. Okay. So I, they all join next to him for a group photo. The whole Army Navy football team's there, and I pull my pants down team. on the fucking bar and put my ass right on the one guy's head for the photo. You're, you're on heroin again, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any money to be. I don't have any money. You know what it is, though? Like, the Army Navy guys are cool, and they're cool to talk to and stuff like that, and they always love watching the, the show while they're, like, away, you, you know, but, but they're so, like kind of rude, man. Like, they come up and just press the phone against my ear, and they're like, talk to my nephew. Yeah, talk to my nephew. It's like, Omaha. yes, sir. Like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> drop it, give me 20. You got it. I know. Sir. Like, if he, if he would have demanded to drop it, give me 20, I'd probably, oh, okay, yes, okay. <laughs> He's too scared to talk say Talk to my no. nephew, and then drop it, give me 20. <laughs> you got it, Captain. 
God damn. These guys just go home and jerk off a full metal jacket all night. <laughs> <laughs> they see a big fucking machete and their dick is hard. Oh, totally. Done. Done. Tell, tell everybody about City Walk. City Walk is in, uh, is in Hollywood and it's this, this place. We were staying at the Hilton, so the only place to go eat food was in City Walk. No, but, uh, no, 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 no. And Dunn no, loves no attention at all. So not, what happens? Not the only place to eat. <laughs> first, of all, first of all, Dunn only likes dive bars with three Hessians in there and hopefully they're pagan bikers. <laughs> and won't we'll talk to them, hopefully. Yeah. I, I, I drink. I don't like talking involved in drinking. So what happens? Doesn't mix. What happened at City Walk was, first off, bam, sucks. Second off, uh -huh. it's not the only place to eat. It's the most glamorous. Kids got goddamn oh, God. face paint. They're they're running around with Twizzlers and lights Twizzlers. flaring and shit. Like little like eight year old kids. Jamba so, juice is everywhere. Oh, Jamba juice and, and cell phones lighting up with like weed signs. And, and, stuff. Yeah, and Bam Bam and I and. Uh, and dipshit over there fucking <laughs> trying to get back to the hotel. Dude, everybody knows who dipshit is. Yeah, we're trying That'd to get back to the hotel. And Bam just decides to get dropped off at City Walk and make the trek of about a quarter mile through the mall to our hotel when all we had to do was make a UB <laughs> and be at the hotel. What did he have in his hand? That he, made had, him so... he had a Christmas present in there wrapped with a bow on top. It looked like he had a human body in there. It was like <laughs> six by six by four. The thing was huge. You could barely see his head above the fucking bow tie. I was carrying, and he's a carrying this thing. present from the uh, Craig Kilborn show because I just did it and they gave me this massive box just filled with like Belvedere. So, was, so already, like already a neon light flash and look at me. Even if we're not on TV, we'd be noticed just because of that. So already I'm just like, I can't believe you're doing this to me. I just want to hide in a corner and drink some, you know, Jack. And uh, we're walking through and he's like, no, I found this greatest club to go to. It's up here. It's mellow and chill. We greatest go upstairs. Club. There's a guy who's singing there playing a banjo to you. There's a guy dressed up as a mascot trying to sell you, you know, coleslaw. You know. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's 800 kids outside screaming Bam's name. And all I want to do is down a beer. And I'm in the heaven. entire Just elementary school oh, of, of California was there and they all recognized us and it was just a goddamn madhouse. The whole time I'm dying and, and dipshit over there is just loving every second. <laughs> I was completely sober at this point so I just got like my fixated high off of looking at Dunn's face and the misery that <laughs> he felt. She's so mad oh. that there's all these... Some, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just picture this. Everybody listening, picture this. A kid came up with those glow-in-the-dark eyeglasses oh, and like Spider-Man drawn on his face asking for an autograph. That was my day. That was that was, that was was City Walk for me. That's what Bam chose to do. The thing was, the limo was going to drop us off at the hotel and he insisted that we got dropped off on the far end to walk I know. through. I could have been knee-deep in the freaking minibar. Yeah. I'm sitting there thumbing around, you know, doing drawings and shit. I'm coloring within the lines with these little fuckers. <laughs> here's, here's, the, here's the best part of it ever. Some kid who has no pull whatsoever to the entire mall <laughs> oh. feels that he needs to take the matter in his own hands to make sure that we get escorted out of the mall and get taken to the hotel <laughs> without getting interrupted. Like, and he made a bigger scene than he ever could have because he grabbed he grabbed me like he was he was so happy that like you know he was the guy who was escorting us out of the mall. He's like, oh no, everybody just get out of the way. Like everybody back up. We we got Bam Margera here from MTV, so just back up now. Now everybody. He knows that we're there. <laughs> this kid's like four foot two, eighty three pounds. He takes me, he takes us all the way to the back of the mall, like where these police officers are. He's like, okay, uh, they're here now, um, and, and I handled everything, so uh, I'll see you guys later. And the police officer's like. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you and who are these people? <laughs> so here I am, name dropping myself to the I have, police. I have to go to the police like, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a celebrity in a TV <laughs> yeah, show I and, really uh, you know, we just got bombarded at the mall. Like, that's the last thing that I want to do. <laughs> and here we are. And I'm telling the police who I am and why we need to get escorted out of there. I'm, fo I'm following you. I'm just trying to stay out of all the fanfare. And, and this dipshit throws you into a bush. <laughs> You're in the bush and he stands in the center and goes, everybody step away. I got bam. Here. You already got him in a bush, dipshit. He's hidden. Don't stand up in the middle of it like a freaking tombstone and tell everybody to step away, you fucking loser. No, he wanted everybody to know, and he wanted everybody to see him, like, carrying me out. Like, he thought it was the greatest. He's like a 14-year-old kid who was, like, opening the door to a shoe store, and he thought he needed to take the matter in his own hands. He was like he a sucks. shoe salesman who impersonated a fucking security guard. He's never got a paycheck for being a security guard in his life. So you can avoid this. you got to get an Abe Lincoln beard and a hat and go dress up and have a blast with it. You can be somebody new every time. They'll never know you. Well, tell him how you're going to dress up to go to the mall beard. tomorrow. <laughs> how am I? He's, he's going to dress up in the mall tomorrow with, like, full-on jogging suit, like, Nike yeah, running shoes. Yeah, that's the best part. Dude, if I have a hooded sweatshirt with sweatpants and Nikes on, no one would ever know that it was me. Put a hat on for it, they'll never know you. 
See, the problem is I always put on a hooded sweatshirt and it says him on the back, and I keep forgetting. (laughs) You know know what works? Dress up like Ryan Dunn and nobody gives a shit anyway. (laughs) Amen to that. (laughs) Uh, uh, I'm going to play a song, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a break. This band is Children of Bodom. They're from Finland. And uh, the song is called Chokehold, and this is Radio Bam on Sirius 28 Faction. Faction, baby. I guess. Now back to Radio Bam. Uh, 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 oh, oh. oh, we're back. It's Raycon, Novak, Don, Nico, <coughs> Rabbi, and Bam. And that song was Children of Bodom. Choke. Oh, the band is Children of Bodom? Oh, I fucked that up <laughs> so hard. Chokehold is the song, sorry. <laughs> See, this is the rock that I like, man. What do you listen to? You, yeah, you listen E-L-O. to harpsichord and classical music. Harp, harpsichord and ELO. What's last CD, buddy? ELO. ELO. Some uh, dollar classical one at the dollar Why show. do you buy that crap? It's fucking wonderful. I don't have to hear any asshole singing about some love story. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend loves me. I hate that shit. <laughs> Speaking of girlfriends and relationships, oh, let's God. talk about Novak last night. Oh, there's, a, there's a hole in my fucking wall. And Novak did something to it. Like, no, <laughs> no, uh, not uh, him. His fast company girlfriend did. Oh. Uh, what happened? Me, uh, it was well, five in the morning. I, I wake up to all this okay, ruckus. Okay, I'll take a replay. Should I recap from the last three nights or just last night? Recap. Um, let's let's start with last night, but uh, ease up on the... Uh, yeah, 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 I'm going right, right, to... Right, you know, there's nice people listening. <laughs> um... My, nice my, my birthday was December 10th, which was a couple days ago. Happy so birthday, bro. Happy birthday. Uh-huh. Shrug overlord yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a great excuse to be loaded. Do you really have to give us the long story? I just love you and want to get in your pants. Oh, just, just, come on, guys. Sum it up. Okay, sum it up. Let's Why is there up. a hole in my wall? Okay, asshole. so um, we go to a bar last night. Uh, Jimmy and Pop and those guys from Bloodhound Gang throw a birthday party. The, there's two hot girls in this whole place. The one happens to be a shooter girl. I get her, right? A what girl? A shooter. Yeah. You know the girls who walk around and sell shooters? Oh, yeah. A shot girl. A shot girl. Changed that up, didn't you? But I was a shooter at the end of the oh, night. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> on you? Now? So, okay. No, like, if you don't tell a fucking story, oh, okay. I'm going to move along over here. So, uh, all right, sister, she comes back. <laughs> are you get serious? On. She comes back to the house. Things are How going, about you write it down Things are going it. superb. <laughs> Jesus. If there was a hot guy, you'd be completely interested. In tell a fucking story, no All right, so I bring this girl back. She is game for whatever. We end up in my room in a lot of great compromising positions. At one point, she is just overwhelmed with joy and feeling great. And I have her in a position to where her head's facing the wall and her hands are as well. So right at the climax, she just takes her fist and, like, punch a hole through the wall. Like, why would she do that? Now? Because maybe she realized he was railing her. And she got a little pissed at her situation. She realized she was with Novak. Yeah. She realized what she was doing, and the only way to get out of it was punch a hole in the wall, and hopefully she'll get kicked out. No, dude, no, no. Done. I witnessed the beginning of him meeting her, and there was no talk whatsoever. Like, he, he didn't even make an attempt to get it. It was just like, damn, girl, you have a nice ass. Let me see that. And then she showed it, and she was holding the shots, and he's just like, you need to come home with me. And she's like, fine, I will. And he's like, yeah, but we're going to do, like, dirty things. She's like, yeah, I'm all for it. And he's like, yeah, and then some of my friends may get involved. And she's like, that's fine. And he's like, all right, well, what time do you get off work? She's like, 1.30. And then at 1.30, he hops in her car, <laughs> takes her to my house, and she punches a hole in the fucking wall. And then I wake up to find a thank you note on the table. What she thanked me. She's like, thank you for inviting me. Because I sell dreams. This house does. This house. <laughs> yo, yo, you sell disease. You, you just hand out petri dishes. This this house to strangers is my house. Okay, they don't know Bam. It's my house. And uh, the I've, I've had a couple dream sellers in the last couple of days, so the Hummer's been mine. Yeah. But, how, about, uh, how about the Lamborghini chick? Oh, uh, that, ladies that and you gentlemen, claim that you're in love with. I'm gonna end it all for she her. Was pretty hot though. You you lied to her straight out of the gate. No, I didn't. And man. then you lied to her a second time, saying that the Hummer was yours. You was you picked her up in the Hummer because I'm a nice guy. She's like. How come you rode on the Hummer? He's like, I don't care, babe. I'll just ride on my I'm Hummer. I'm like, babe, you can run this dude, into a tree. I don't care. <laughs> I, w- I wish your cum stained, so I knew who to stay away from. Oh, dude. I just look for little speckle marks on every one of these nasty but girls. But I promise you, you don't the know girls that, that have to go anywhere. my body fluids on them, those are the ones you want to be with, because you don't have to talk to them for eight yeah, hours. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. I'm, not yeah. Vouching. Seriously. I'm not vouching for the Lambo chick. She might be pretty cute, but she is dumb as a fucking box of rocks, dude. Done. She's coming from Jersey, right? I tell her to take I-95 to 322. She winds up in King of Prussia. I don't know how the hell she got to King of Prussia. She must have took the turnpike, but she calls. I'm like, okay, you're in King of Prussia. That's fine. Hop on 202 South, 
can go straight into Westchester. So it's so simple. The King of Prussia Mall hop on 202 South. She calls 30 minutes later. She's like, does Springfield sound familiar? I'm like, you took the blue route? I'm like, you're so far away now. You might as well just turn around. Like, she's one of those Asian drivers. Oh, ladies, oh, ladies, uh, half Asian. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't and say C word, but you can refer to Asian drivers. Uh, we're PC here. Ladies and gentlemen, her, her, her looks don't equal her intelligence, but goddamn... I'm going to settle for it because the closest I've found to the real thing. Because it's all you But there's only one problem, Doug. She lives an hour and a half away, man. And well, you cheated on her last night. Because we, we aren't official. Car. We aren't boyfriend girlfriend yet, man. If you man. had a fucking car, you could just drive to her house. It's only an hour and a half. But that You're like, bad. I'll settle for it. You take a sewer grate. No, no, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> settle no, for it. You're taking around. anything that's moving and just, you know, <laughs> takes it. I'll have a good time with almost anything, but to make her a keeper, she has to be a few steps You're, you're not even looking for an approval. You're not looking for an okay. You're just looking for a nod. In a grunt, like, uh, all right, I'm in. That's it. <laughs> Dude, the chick punched holes in my fucking He room. takes it. We room. just went through that. Have you and guess who has to pay for it, probably? If you. What is he going to pay for it with? An IOU. This yeah. asshole put a Tupac poster over it. Yeah. And act like it never happened. <laughs> he like he's playing Shawshank in his yeah. room. He's got his own little escape room. <laughs> the Shawshank <laughs> redemption. He, th he thinks he's back in prison. <laughs> Jailbird wants to fly to Coop. You're back in prison, so you got your little Shawshank. <laughs> you never know when they're going to come get me, man. Well, at no, least you got that sewer sewer vent you can climb through. You got a rusty sewer grate. I live in the big house. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Anything bigger than a dog house is a big house to him. <laughs> Yo, oh, this room that we're in right now is eight by ten is like a mansion to me. So fuck, what do you I didn't have to explain house? that to us? This radio God, room man, is awesome. So, so listen, we, we just told you about the two two Novak stories. Now we're gonna get to the third one. I went into Iron Hill. Oh, God. Just to finish this calendar that I'm working on, we were peacefully sitting in the corner. Some girl sits down, named Robin. Is that her, I forget her name. Is that what it was? Do you have a diamond in her beard? Well, because because, yeah, good, because she wrote her birthday in my fucking oh, calendar. That's do you right. remember that? <laughs> I do. So, so uh, he, she's like acting like she, she doesn't like him one bit. She's not about him because he's so like, uh, he's like disgusting. no small talk here, baby. Yeah, he was so disgusting. He's a vulgar pig. And then once she True. called him Big Daddy as a joke, he's like... Oh, babe, man, I just got so turned on right there. I'm and like half hard. So once he said that, she kept saying Big Daddy. And then once I, once did that happen, I'm like, Novak, dude, she's saying it because you just said that you got turned on. I, I think that you should try to take her to the bathroom. So she says, I have to go to the bathroom. I said, do you want me to show you where it is? Because this place is dangerous. There's a lot of criminals. Oh, yeah. I'll escort and you. I'm one of them. <laughs> I'll escort you. You know, <laughs> hopefully you'll be your first behind so I can take the money. But let's not talk about that. So I escort her, I and then we get going. to the bathroom. I said, do you want me to go in with you, or are you just saying I'm too scared? She's like, I think you're too scared. I get in the bathroom. 20 seconds later, six, my sick in seconds. Six in seconds. So it's just, me to listen to you. Man, I live in the projects. I don't really know right <laughs> words. Continue. So but, like 20 seconds later, my pants are to my knees, and she is just violating me, while the owner's like, yo, it's closing time. No guys in the girls' room. <laughs> yeah, come on, closing time. I feel like I'm in a conversation with like a reunion of Alpha Pi Beta. <laughs> <laughs> and then his college like stories. Then this bitch is all over me, you know what I'm saying? I was like drinking this, you know, like keg stand. Like, sh what? God, you know what I, I know. Think How old is? are you? You think I? I, I think that you're. Well, just... I was getting blowed to an inverted keg stand. My frat buddy comes in and starts kicking the shit out of me. <laughs> Look, just go play some football or something. Stay away from me. Uh, and see, so you're using the reverse psychology. You want me to be on you, not away from you. Oh come on. Maybe. What? You know. <laughs> Nobody knows where you're going with this. Yeah, where you are you going with that? I think I've been lost since I walked in the room. <laughs> I think, I think you were engaged season. in a whole other conversation now. You're reading another book, bud. <laughs> bud. <laughs> Why bud? <laughs> God, Ryan. Rap, what do you think of this me. conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Rab currently is sitting, sitting, currently sitting in the corner of the room, drinking a beer, half asleep, just just watching the parade. Did you just get back from Chicago? Yeah, what were I you was doing it. there. Oh, you were um, judging a Maxim bikini. Contest. He got to Maxim, but they didn't even put bikinis on. What kind of shit was that? What was it? Maxim is hot. All these broads just got on the bar and started dancing, and then yeah, they tried to violate Asian you? judged them. Don't talk about Asian. Was it worth it? Guys are pounding yeah, Asian tonight. Don't talk about Asian because he's, I'm in love with one man. Watch your mouth, Rab. <laughs> You're in love with every race. You're in yeah. love with everybody at one You'd point. You'd fuck Lassie if she had fingernail polish. This twisted fucko probably has already. Well, you see we have two new additions to the house on my behalf. Two beautiful kittens. 
Oh, we have geez. pussies running around all day long. You're fucking sick. You're yeah. a sick pig. It's the holidays. And that's all you talk about. God, God. Is, there, is there a room we can lock him in? <laughs> What's with the holidays? <laughs> How come everybody has to watch their mouth during the holidays? I know. <laughs> There's no Santa. It's just another day, man. You had the stewardess on the airplane tell you to watch your mouth because it's the holidays. Thanksgiving. Shouldn't you watch your mouth in general? <laughs> why, why just because of the holidays? If it's like mid, like May, you could just say whatever the Curse hell you want. Free. But the funny thing is, is our buddy Will here, who's behind the boards, he can't really talk right now. Behind the he's boards, like, what's it, a hockey He's all professional. He's, he can't partake in this. He's like, you know, I go out, like, just imagine yourself going to dinner with, like, some I would give you $19 and, and shut up. And, well, <laughs> Oh, oh, you know man. what? No, I got more than that. Come on, pick it I up. I will give I'll, anything I'll, to get you just go in the other room. I'll be quiet. So, <laughs> someone needs to go on a piss break. Yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> 20 bucks, just leave for a little bit. I'm shutting up now. I got 20 bucks. No, no, leave plus. the room. Go take a piss break. He's going to go buy smokes at A+. Plus. No, no value. Deal. You're always getting all these girls, but, and, but you always complain about no money. You should get the girls to pay you, even I, if it's like yeah. five bucks. Get them to pay you to do it. Well, they pay for everything. They don't pay me. <laughs> I get a couple <laughs> bucks out of it. They pay for my drinks. Say, give me a five. Dude. It's so much hotter to pay for sex. I third ball buddy Peter used to do that. He just told his girls his name was Kane and just got money to have sex with him. You know? <laughs> Kane. I just want to let you guys know I got the twenty bucks back. So this is my Christmas present for the next ten years because I thought I was gonna pry that out of your shitty fucking hands. <laughs> I thought money was dirty. Now it's extremely <laughs> filthy <of> Novak. <laughs> That 20 has Hep C on it. Oh. That 20 just walked out of my pocket and went and washed itself. Dude, Brandon, I'm glad it's you and not me tonight because you are getting fucking killed. Where? Yo, go, oh. seriously, go go to the bathroom and shampoo that dollar just to be safe. You can't even burn Novak's germs. They're super germs. It's like super AIDS. There's no chemist that can make it pissed. better. <laughs> no chemist can fix this problem. I can try, but that shit's going to be a tall order. Oh, my God. Anybody got any matches? Novak has such filthy diseases that if he fucks you or has sex, I'm sorry. Thanks. If you have any diseases, his super diseases will destroy them and eat them, and then they'll start. And you know what? You'll be cured up for like an hour or so. You know what's sick? Is ladies are waiting in line for these diseases. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's sick. I no, can't, they're I can't submissing even... into these diseases. They're not waiting in line. They're not. They're not punching a card. They're just giving up. They're like, dude, I can't listen to this guy talk to me yeah, for they... one more iota. I'm just going to let him do me and get the hell out. You're talking. You're talking. You it's like iota? an ice pick. Yeah. You're talking. It's like an ice pick to my ear. I, shit, I'll fucking just get you shut up. <laughs> well, the beautiful thing is when they say no, it's just drunk talk. Oh, See, again, I don't know where you're going. Well, well, everybody should be lost because I have the greatest story in the world, and I'm going to play a song and then tell you all about it. All right. And I'm going to play Iggy Pop. There's a new album, and this song's called Blood on Your Cool on Radio Bam, Serious 28 Faction. Boy sluts, find out about it next. 28. All right, that was Iggy Pop, Blood on Your Cool, and here goes the best story ever and done. I don't think you heard about this one yet. All right, so I go to Versace at the King of Prussia Mall just to check the joint out. I've never been in it before, but I know that they have all this expensive shit, and I just <laughs> find out what it was all about, like if it's really worth the cash. I walk in. There's this shady dude working there, and so he ins shady. he recognized me instantly and insisted that I tried on these pants. They, I didn't like the way they fit, so I told him I didn't want them. Then he hands me another pair. He goes, all right, fine, then try these on. Then I tried them on. I'm like, no, I don't like these either. They, I, we did this five times. I'm like, you're not going to let me fucking leave unless I buy a pair of pants, huh? You, you know, and then so finally I bought these pair of pants, which later on I found out that they were 500 bucks. But uh, <laughs> so so we go across the the, uh, the way to this bar called California Cafe or something, and that's like his local hotspot after he closed. So uh, we start talking to this guy, and um, he, he, he says that he wants to hang out with us. So he comes down to Westchester with us. We go to Spence Cafe. One of those guys from Versace, you brought him around here? The weird dude, looking. He, he insisted that he can't. Oh no, God. no. Dude, dude his he, ass he, is on fire for more he's shit. That's all burning. It's Rake, here's the, he's a fucking thug from North Philly. <laughs> the, whole thing is, the whole thing is a front. <laughs> he was telling me that he was robbing banks from Philly to Atlanta the whole way down. So, so uh, yeah. But this was like ages ago. He said he got 10 grand a pop on the whole way down. So automatically I think this guy's shady, but he's like, yeah, I don't do that anymore. That was 10 years ago. So I'm like, all right, this dude's like pretty shady. But we're already at Spence Cafe, so there's no turning back. So uh, he steals some girl's credit card, which I didn't know until later. Which is the only thing they ever run at that Versace store, yeah. stolen credit card. He, so he, he winds up in my house all hopped up, like just drunk as hell, annoying everybody that Mark Hanna, 
was actually <laughs> Mark Hanna works on the Viva the La Bam show. The least annoying person that we know. Ha Hanna works. At, he's the art. Uh, he works in the art department yeah. on the Viva <laughs> La Bam show. <laughs> he he was work. so annoyed with the Versace guy that he was just like, dude, I'll drive you wherever you need to go, just so long as you stop being here. So he's like, all right, I'll give you fifty bucks if you take me back to North Philly. Done. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening to the cat behind me meowing. <laughs> That's all I hear. Oh, is my Chinese food here? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> go ahead. So, so, <laughs> go ahead. More. Shut the fuck up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So Hannah takes him all the way back to North Philly, and he goes, I'm not going to give you 50 bucks. But I'm gonna uh, take you to this massage place. Is that cool? And, oh no! And, and, yeah, and, and it was this rub and tug joint. So <laughs> he gets a rub and tug, swipes the credit card through, and Hannah's ex-girlfriend says somebody stole my credit card and charged it up at some Asian massage. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, I swear dude, to God. Dude, what a coincidence! Oh like, my God! So true. Hannah's ex-girlfriend paid for his rub and tug in North Philly. <laughs> Hannah had to admit that he took part in it. Oh, why did he admit it? Because it was just such a coincidence. Like, what? I went to an Asian massage parlor that night. She's like, what? He had to drive some sketchy thug home from North Philly. And, and dude, like, the guy happened Fucking to take crazy. Hannah's girlfriend's ex, or ex girlfriend's credit card. Hannah wasn't even at Spence. Was she here? It wasn't just no, like No, she was at Spence. He, fucked, he just stole her credit card. And then she memorized. He memorized the the uh, the pin number to Jen's credit card. Took out five hundred bucks. And then B and I swiped my credit card through for the five hundred dollar jeans. He wrote down the uh, the code to my credit card and went on PlayPal and ordered some seven hundred dollar leather jacket on fucking Leatherworks in Jersey. Jesus, Christ. Jesus. So this guy got twelve hundred dollars worth of shit in one day. Throughout think all of, this, think I was how much many at the people he must fuck over. And you just got a shitty pair of pants. He didn't even want. Oh, them pants are sweet though, man. Yeah, now that you're wearing them. Well, they're in my room, actually, but I haven't worn them yet. Oh, you God. never will. I won't. No, don't. It's like, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, those way. things, I'm getting my money out of them things. I'm only up to 250 on them things. They got it one from Novak, they're priceless. <laughs> <laughs> it's got antimicrobial weave in it. Guys, I'm not that bad. That's insane. Dude. I, I never can't believe I, Hannah just got a rub and tug on his ex girlfriend's dude, credit no, card. Of all places in North Philly, <laughs> he jerked off in North Philly. It's that doesn't even happen in movies. No, like, no, it's no. too much of a coincidence that nobody would ever believe it. Like, Hannah wasn't even at Spence. He just happened to. He was like, "This broad's credit card's out, and I'm gonna steal it." He steals it and finds out it's Hannah's ex girlfriend. Dude, hey, like, she calls up like, "Somebody fucking stole my credit card last night." Like, really? All oh, that sucks, babe. Yeah, and then they ran up all the shit. Oh, really? Would they run up some Asian massage? Part of North Philly. He's like, that was me last night. <laughs> <laughs> told her. Oh, yeah, he God. told her. Oh, but God. you gotta give it up to him, man, because that's a great criminal. Oh, dude, I. That's why I'm not even gonna tell on the guy. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> tell on him. Yeah. You're gonna tell the teacher about him. You're Maybe get him suspended. Him tell that. on well, the guy. Dude, he took twelve hundred dollars straight from under me in Can one you night. Prove it. You know what? Huh? Be you jealous, that, Novak? Let that be a lesson. You're, you're, you're jealous of that criminal. <laughs> that's why I shop at the dollar store. This show would be so less disturbing if these things didn't really happen. <laughs> but it's all the truth, and that's what's so crazy. I just want to leave. Them I just want to hang out with them and get notes, footnotes, man. <laughs> I need that. You gonna go get some cliff notes? Didn't off? I pay you to leave? You know, yeah. I don't have anywhere to go to spend the money at right now, <laughs> or a car to get me there. No, man, I know it's Sunday. Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. 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 Oh God, Phil. <laughs> he can't say day in any day of the week. Like it's got to be Monday. Okay. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Monday. Sunday. Yo, Ra, you want to meet up on Sunday? <laughs> he doesn't see how that's weird. Let's meet up on Sunday. We'll go to the mall. We'll go to Ruby Tuesday. Sunday. <laughs> Ruby Tuesday. Well, I there, Phil. <laughs> it's, like this, it's like the sports joint we ended up in. Remember that, Bam? You had a great idea to go to the movies, and where did we end up before we went to the movies? God, that place was hell. What, what place? We went to the movies, but we ended up in a sports joint. Oh, talk about it. <laughs> we went to the sports bar. You right love next this to place, the movie Don. Theater. No, Dude. No. Yeah, you're right. Everything is sports. Your fork has a soccer ball on it. The table has golf balls on it. The there's, seats were stadium chairs. There's, yeah, the seats were stadium chairs. There is TV screens everywhere just playing every sport imaginable. Dude, yeah. let, me, let me put like, like snowmobiling, duck hunting, let me put like reverse with a duck gun, <laughs> everything. Let me put like reverse real quick. What, Novak? You said I'd be into this place? It's got sports everywhere. I can't throw a thing. 
I was I was ready to, I was ready to load up a needle and die. I would not be in a sports bar ever. Well, no, I go to the biker bars. Just for people who don't know, going out with Ryan's the greatest thing. You go to the bar, you sit down, you drink, and you don't talk to each other. Yeah, shut the hell up. The only thing is, talk. every time it's I want to go to a bar, I've ever had. The I'm only like, thing you have to ask is, what will you have next? I'm like, yo, done. Then get the hell away from me. Go play the pinball machine. I'll be putting out a vibe at the jukebox. I got a prime question for you right now, Dunn. Like, I'm about getting ladies and getting lucky. So Dunn's like, I'm going to a bar tonight. I'm like, yo, where are you going? You know, maybe we'll meet up and go. He refuses to tell me ever where he's going. He never wants me to come where he's at. Why is that, Dunn? Who would want you to come where we're at? No, I wouldn't. You do. Sick of pain. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, got a great I've, gone, I've gone so far to say I was at another place and then leave as soon as I told you that because I realized. I'm like, wait a minute. I just, I, I, I just told Novak where I'm at. I'll pay my bill, drink my beer, and move along. Like, he never wants to go anywhere with me. Why? Anytime I ever call you and you're at some dive bar, I'm like, yo, what's up? Where are you at? I'm at Kevin's Sports Bar. I'm like, who's I'm there? Burns. No one. <laughs> well, was it boring? Hell no. It's fun as hell. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits there alone and drinks Remy Martin and doesn't talk to a single soul. Do you, like read or watch the TV? No. What do you do? I, every, after every sip, I thank Remy Martin for what he's contributed to my life. <laughs> and then I take another one. What do you think about when you're there, though? I don't think about anything. That's, That's what I hate about people like you. You come and you want to talk to me and talk about feelings. Well, how's your day? F <laughs> off. Get away from me. My brain is empty. That's why I'm drunk. I'm a raging alcoholic because I don't have to deal with my problems. It's fantastic. I'm ignorantly, drunkenly happy. Stay the hell away from me. And if you want to dance, F off. <laughs> Just get away from me. I have a CD for you. What? It's called George Thurgood. I uh, drink alone. Yeah, oh. yeah I, with nobody. I, I know. <laughs> That's too uppity. That's too uppity. No, no. no I've heard that. They went the wrong way with that song because it's got too upbeat to it. Yeah. If you're drinking alone, you don't want to hear stupid shit like that, like guitar. How is no, your song? I want to hear someone playing spoons. And at that, at the most, maybe a harmonica, maybe back in the background, maybe I can hear it faintly from the frickin' bathroom. That's all I want to hear. Other than that, silence, maybe some CNN on replay, no audio, and leave me the hell up. I don't want you looking at me, because you look at me, and then I know you're thinking what I'm thinking, and I want you to think what I'm thinking, because I don't want to get in this conversation. Just get me another drink and move along. He's not even, he's not even lying. When he I was growing that. up, I used to think that my Uncle Pat had problems, because he would go in the basement by himself and drink a Sixer. <laughs> and I'm just like, that guy has problems. <laughs> that's you now. I, that's me for the last 10 years. Yes, you don't get it. You get mad at me every time I don't show up. Why would I want to show up and chit chat? It just gets in the way of my drinking. If you've never done Literally, it before, every, every not time, talking to Ryan is great. Every time I answer like, oh, I'm all right, that's two ounces knocked down the gullet. <laughs> all right? So you you owe me two two ounces. Dico, what do you think of this? Give them to me and get the hell away. I'm, all I'm thinking about is uh, you need, like, a briefcase that has all these, like, things. So when you go in the girls' room, you can, like, fix it up and wax a little <laughs> pillow and some soap to wash up. Little curtains. He's, 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 talk, he's talking to Novak box, right now. <laughs> little little I mean, curtains, you know, like, make it look a little bit more. I have an interesting life, I think. Maybe some people may think, but it's pretty fucking boring to me. But done. Like, I just can't get his theory. And I shot dope for years, and I just can't follow him, man. <laughs> what are you saying? I shoot dope? Why would that help you? Does because that help? because I've been in the lowest of lows, and he loves low bars where he can just sink into nothing. Dude, don't I can't knock follow. it. Until you try it. It's a really good time. Just hanging out with your friends, and you don't have to fucking. He doesn't have any friends. That's the thing. He's I ripped alone. them all off. Well, Dunn done one friend. Hi to me, and that's it. I'm I want friends, but I've ripped them all off, so I don't have any. What was that? You don't want friends. That's the difference between you and I. You don't want friends. You want to be alone. I want friends, but I rip them all off, so I don't have any. <laughs> fucking terrible. I'm sitting right next to you. No, yeah, watch your pocket. Uh, his book's coming out. It's called um, A Deck in the Woods. Lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out this Tuesday. A Deck in the Woods. Yeah, quick recap. Like, when we were filming the CKY... <laughs> Dunn completely caught me. Filming oh, Haggard. Haggard, I'm sorry. I was so high. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, he's filming one of those. I was so, I was hey, so I, high. I, I'm Earth. Have we met? No, I was <laughs> been on fucking Jupiter for years with heroin. But anyways, that was stupid. Don't, don't let's go, go for wittiness. Let's go here, though. Let's go, let, let's go here, though, Dunn. Like, I'm telling Dunn these lies because he saw me, like, and knew everything I was doing. And I'm like, yo, I swear, man. I was doing a kid flip. I got mad. I threw my board in the woods, like, three times. Like, no, once. Completely three times. I got sober and watched the video. I looked like the biggest moron because I thought he believed my lies, but they were such absurd. Only, lies. What were you looking for? I'll tell you what I was looking for. When I when I went home to Baltimore, one of my many excursions to go buy lots of heroin. Of course, I couldn't save any to bring back because I can't save that stuff. I do it all at once. Um, I came back and I 
fucking didn't bring any back, but I had a lot of Valiums. But I still had my needle from the, the, the junk that I was using. So I'm like, well, man, I mean, it's cool swallowing pills, but if I could just shoot them and get that rush off of oh, it, you know? Dude, that was so so I, I, hit, I threw my needle in the woods because I was going to quit. Great idea. I'm going to quit, get rid of it. But I couldn't find it. So I kept on my board in there as an excuse to find the needle so I could base up with the needle with Why the pills. Why do you just wait till everyone went inside and go look? What time does this show air? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the whole time he's talking, all I'm thinking about is some little six-year-old kid just... <laughs> You are screwing people up. Dude, there's going to be dicks falling off before. You know what, school. son? Ew. I really would believe what you said, but uh, something that just happened uh, a couple of days ago that makes my whole thing that I'm doing here worthwhile. Some well, kid. Wait a minute, you're going to talk again, huh? Yeah. So just All right. <laughs> pay me another forty, and I'll shut up. God. But uh, Ape went to some Y100 thing, and a kid gave her a 30-day medallion from NA. He said, "I got clean because of what Novak did. Well, he's clean cool. and he's working that's well." Cool. And that made my whole thing, my book, and everything worthwhile, man. Novak, so. we're on a radio. We're not having a hard time. I know, Jesus. Guys, that's one out of 300 million. Way to go! Pat yourself on the back. Let's get back to entertainment, <laughs> man. I wish I could. Do that. Jesus, I can never get your sob stories here. I can't get sentimental with any of you guys, man. You just laugh at me. Yes, we love it. Okay. Hey, better you than me. <laughs> Look at yourself. How do you expect us not to laugh at you? <laughs> The ladies love me though. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'm losing sleep. I'm gonna send you to I'm gonna send you to Lowe's so you can get some plaster to fix the hole in my face. Hey, that teaches wall. motherfucker. But you know when I go there, I'm gonna bring a hot sales girl back with me. Yeah, hot sales girl from Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, Lowe's. I bring a girl back from wherever I go. I know, you have a bring, face full of gyros. You're gonna bring some some buff bitch carrying lumber. 175 pounds from Thornhill. What dick do I gotta suck to get some matches in this joint? <laughs> Jesus. No, oh. Oh. no, baby. Oh. I, no, I'm fine. No, no, 20 come my way. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are you guys are anxious. Oh, my God. <laughs> what did I say to get some matches? Yeah. 20 just blew at me from the other side of the table. I think three came from Rake alone. <laughs> Take it easy, Rake. Dude, I'm watching that back story. I'm ready to jump on the other side of the table. You ready to jump on my lap? Don't uh, lie, Rake. Hey, man. Rake's having a sleepover at the men's warehouse. <laughs> Everyone's invited. That has something between their legs. Yo, so. Dico, what's Rake's favorite movie? Rake's favorite movie? Um, oh, he's got a new one. He saw this Riding little... in Cars with the Boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's Rake's favorite movie. Uh, riding with Boys in Cars. <laughs> riding with riding Boys in Cars. Riding with Boys in Cars. <laughs> and Hard Times Come Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Rake, talk about that. Why do we think you love hard cocks? No, because for whatever fucking reason. <laughs> I'm just curious. Everywhere I go, it's like I'm the fucking we all men's anthem. It's like I go to a bar. Anthem. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring it. I'll bring these girls to a bar, hot hot girls, and I'll have more guys buy me drinks than. And I start keep a score. I'm like, I had three guys buy me drinks tonight. What do you got? None. You know, it's like, hey, your tits are beautiful, but hey, I'm Rick. You know, fuck off. <laughs> Oh, Ridiculous. Yeah, you don't ever say it to a lady, man. You saw her dream. I oh, think you're the best thing ever. No, see, that's what you do. Yeah, and I get laid almost every night. Yeah, Look, I know. You have you lie for Dr. Dr. Ruth. Shut up. <laughs> All right? I'm helping him, man. He needs help. Yeah, you're not helping anybody. You want help over there? Yeah. Yeah, I need it. Yeah. I want my dick to end up looking like a, you know... <laughs> and old petri dish. I'm going to wear a Cradle of Novak shirt and just borrow a friend's car and just go and get so much fucking ass. <laughs> nah, it doesn't work. It works. Yeah, it works for you, but, you know... Do you have a song to play? Yeah, let's play a song. All right, what do you want to hear? You let's hear, rock out. You want to hear Nar Killer? You want to hear 69 Eyes? 69 Eyes. 69 Eyes. <laughs> Anything by 69 Eyes. Hell yeah. Better fucking Hey, Don, didn't know what 69 are your... Eyes. It's a, it's a Finnish band, and uh, they're like vampires. They wear sunglasses at night like Corey Hart. Really? <laughs> Corey Hart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. So, so this song's Corey called Dalton? Still Waters Run Deep Off of Paris Kills, and this is Radio Bam on Sirius 28 Faction. Strap yourselves in and lace up those shoes because you're listening to Radio Bam. I'm serious, 28 Faction. What's up? This is Radio Bam, and this is him with Brandon D. Camello, Ryan Dunn. What? You alright? <laughs> this is Radio Bam, and this is him. <laughs> we figured that out already. <laughs> Can we redo it, please? No. No, uh, I don't care if you do mine. You gotta fucking do it. Now that. I know they're not gonna redo it. Right. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have Ray Yon. Uh, the dream seller here with Rab himself. So, um, <laughs> done? What? What's your most embarrassing? Start with somebody else, because you got to end with me. I, I got about ten, ten of them I got to go through. I got to, wait a minute, I got to check my file folder. Rick, go ahead. We all, we all just did these interviews today, and the, the last question was, what was your most embarrassing moment ever? Oh, and Brandon... Okay, I just found out about this oh, interview what? thing yesterday, and everyone's like, "Great, Brandon, for that your interview, and it's so it's awesome." So I don't even know what my most embarrassing <laughs> moment is. Let's go on, please. It says, "It says, what's your most embarrassing moment?" And Rake says, 
every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to any any girl ever. <laughs> but uh, dude, my most embarrassing day ever was the day I bought the Ferrari. I uh, I was driving home on the highway. And I stalled out in the fast lane, causing a major traffic jam. And people had to push the Ferrari to the side of the road <laughs> as I figured out how to st start it. As people individually, one by one, said, "Are you banned from what? You what's wrong, man? You don't know how to drive a sports car?" I was just like, "Oh God, man, this is horrible." <laughs> that Everybody was, listening is like. That could be possibly the best embarrassing moment ever. People <laughs> dream for that embarrassing uh, moment. Wait a minute, I'm in a Ferrari? Yeah. <laughs> it's your not nightmare. so bad. <laughs> Dude, on I-95, <laughs> just stop dead in the fast lane. Like, hey, bro, man, could you push me aside because I don't know how to drive this thing. <laughs> I just did the same thing on my Yugo yesterday. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> hey, you riding up from TV? <laughs> yeah. Who, who are you driving that car for? <laughs> me? <laughs> Yeah, a little more embarrassing, but uh, the same type of thing. I appreciate it. Rab, what's yours? <laughs> oh, my God. My oh. most embarrassing moment is definitely when we were filming the game show up in Bam's living room. Oh, this was great. Rake is dressed like a French whore. I go up to him, try to tackle him with some wrestling move. You were trying to be a hard ass? I was trying to be a hard ass so bad. I flipped him back, dislocated my arm. My dick comes popping out. The whole fucking crew of MTV is standing there on the steps, just pointing and fucking laughing. Uh, I can't even cover arm, it up. Your arm I'm was too jacked to fix it? Dude, I'm trying to get my arm back in, trying to cover my dick at the same time. I'm just in extreme pain trying to get it all fixed, and I can't okay. do a goddamn thing. All I hear is happening. Hannah just right there, like, ah, 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 <laughs> just pointing at me and laughing. The whole fucking crew saw I, well, I gotta, I gotta chime it. in on this one real quick. I, I, just let me chime in real quick. Freaking Rab, I couldn't take him anymore. They was being such an ass to me. I was dressed like a French whore, and he slapped me in the face. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kill him right here, right now. <laughs> so as I'm trying to kill him, I realize, oh my god, he wrestled. So he gets me in this like, suplex, and I'm on the ground. So then I'm just leaning on him. I hear a pop. It was either his arm or his pants. He's grabbing his shoulder, <laughs> kicking around, and Bam comes up. He's like, "Your ding ding is hanging out." Yeah, I had no idea. Like, I just thought that there was just a little drift of air. I was like, "Wow, oh, this just feels weird." All of a sudden, <laughs> well, for, forget my most embarrassing moment. Thank you for my most reassuring moment because I realized I wasn't the smallest man in the room that night, <laughs> and I'm pretty small. The man. whole people of Bam cast and crew saw your February ding ding. <laughs> February <laughs> with a whole. It's like a half a thumb. He's sitting there grabbing his arm, and the like, heat the heat wasn't on that day. <laughs> Something wasn't on. It looked like a light switch. It looked like Rab had No, God, I must be cold in here. Ah, uh, no, Rab, that's, that's not like, it. That's exactly the thermostat is all the way up. Dude, it looked like Rab had assless chaps, and I was worried about his arm. I'm looking at him like, Rab, are you okay? Are you okay, Sam? Yeah. Like, your dick is hanging out. I looked down, and he didn't know whether to grab his arm or his dick. And there's like three game show cameras zoomed in on his February schlong, dude. It was Dude, horrible. The thing was, he didn't even know it was hanging out, and I was and I was at the top just looking down, and he was just all like concerned with his arm, like oh, oh my arm kicks on Katie. I'm like, dude, your fucking beanbag's hanging out. Not even help them. Why don't you fix that first? I nobody would help him because his dick's flopping in the wind. <laughs> and, and for some reason, all like the girls that work on the computers at the office happen to be there, and they're never there. They yeah. were like right in the perfect spot on the steps, just all staring at me, pointing and laughing. I'm and like, I what's just... Alex and Tally doing here? And like, <laughs> and they just happened to see everything. Dude, they were so embarrassed for you. <laughs> 25, 25 people and at least six cameras. Three of them straight up like Alex Trebek style, dude. It was crazy. <laughs> we have digi beta footage of your beanbag hanging out. <laughs> While he's screaming in pain. Dude, I didn't know what to do. It was the worst. That was Franz, Franz was rolling 35 millimeter film on. Okay, now I, that was my most embarrassing moment too, being right next to Raph's fucking... That was my most embarrassing moment because I was so embarrassed for you. <laughs> All right, done. Let's hear your most embarrassing moment. Oh, I'm not going to give that one away. That's going to have to wait for another show. That's a good 20-minute bit there. i got to explain how I got into that one-tooth wonder. So just oh, it's that, a fest. So. Please say it, man. I heard just about go, that. Literally, do Is that have, it? Honestly, do we have enough? Do we have 30 minutes? Because that's how long it's going to take. I, we got some time. Says yes. Is that the chick who woke up with beer cans in the morning and stuff? Without rakes. Yeah. yeah. That, please tell it. It's tell the story. It's that's brilliant. When I, that's when I was in Chambersburg, New York. I used to do audiovisual work. Isn't that P.A.? 
No, yeah, right. Chambersburg, PA. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I wish it was in another state. It happened to be on the same sto soil as it happened. Um, so there I was doing audiovisual work, and I do this job, and I show back up, and I'm drunk at the bar with this guy who worked for me. I'm so drunk that I'm on top of the bar drinking, uh, drinking and singing People Who Need People. Meanwhile, the guy who works for me is calling the boss, <laughs> telling him that the guy who runs the show is singing People Who Need People on the bar. I drink about every booze. So uh, I get back down. There's four girls in the place and us two. There was two reasonably looking girls, reasonably decent looking girls, and two just gargantuan like you would you wouldn't even want to sweep them under your rug you would just want to just you know forget them what were so, you drinking uh i don't know i was just drinking everything before the rabbit probably yeah, yeah this is this is years and years ago beer goggles in effect oh uh, uh, no no i was just drunk there's beer goggles my eyes didn't even work they shut hours ago my legs weren't even in effect would i so, slept with them just no. shut up how about that okay i want to hear that. all right so uh my buddy's just like, look, we can spend about 20 minutes and get these hot chicks over here. They weren't hot. You know, they were, you know, like, <laughs> not despicable. Yeah. And then he's like, or we can get these two girls over here right now. And I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. You deal with it. <laughs> I get back out. He's got his arm around one girl with, like, a single horn and her ears flapping off. The other girl just got, like, a zit that looked like, you know, the Alps, you know, like, <laughs> something's gushing out of her nose. She got no teeth. And, and at that point, I'm just like... Whatever. <laughs> so uh, the one girl had to go home and get shaved. Oh, God. <laughs> Luckily, that wasn't my girl because my girl didn't have to clean up, you know, the playing field oh, like that. God. She just went out there running. So we get back to the hotel, and, and uh, luckily I couldn't get it hard enough to actually screw her officially. I just had to throw it in, you know, duffel bag style. But um, it was just sideways. And uh, this, again, again, for my family out there, this was years ago. I was in a bad place. So um, he always says so, uh, that. The, the, in the middle of the night, I realized that I didn't finish because I was too drunk and I was too disgusted with what I was looking at. So I woke up at about five o'clock in the morning. And this girl, who I'll just refer to as Bertha, we'll refer to her as Bertha, and she is drinking the swill out of about thirty empty cans throughout the room and smoking cigarette butts she out of the ashtrays. Didn't you wake up at six in the morning like with half an eye closed and you just see her roaming around this sick college house trying to find like a, the last That's what I was just saying. Beer. She was drinking the swill out and then my buddy's in the room with me because we had, we had to stay in the same hotel, hotel room and she's sitting there watching Geraldo at like six o'clock in the morning drinking Ew. the swill and smoking butts smoking and she pulled butts. out the floor <laughs> and half butts like yeah, half butts. cigarettes. Half of the beers stupid. that she was drinking had butts in them and <laughs> And, uh, then he just he grabs the shut up and he grabs <laughs> he grabs the the, the uh, remote control out of her hand, wings against the wall, busts the remote control, turns off the TV. I wake up, it's still dark. I realize that she's still in the room. She's laying on the floor, passed off on top of like busted yeah. beer bottles and stuff. I get in the shower. I'm in the shower for maybe three or four hours. Did you skip the part that you humped her? No, I already told you about he that. Threw in a duffel bag. The he duffel bag. Did. He didn't have a I, did, I couldn't get hard enough, so I had to do a duffel bag. So she was morning, lighting up the butts of cigarettes. Like, like when people ashtray. are finished with their cigarettes, they just throw them, and she's picking them up and lighting them up just to get a few more smokes. Yeah. So, so I'm about in those days. <laughs> are we done? Can I continue? Go ahead. All right. Thanks. So there I was, waking up. I wake up next to this Neanderthal, and I was like, "Fuck!" So I got to go into the shower. I sit in the shower for three and a half hours wallpapers peel and I'm like she's for sure gone meanwhile my buddy's outside holding her she wanted to leave and he's like no he's gonna want to give you a kiss goodbye <laughs> I, get, I get out of the shower looking like a prune I look like one the, I'm just wrinkled from head to toe my skin's white it's almost transparent and I'm just like oh man I come out of there steam rolls out of the door and she comes running up with her one tooth on the bottom looks brown looks like a brown Ew. piece of coral reef I can see right oh through it God. she comes up she kisses me I walk her out the door lock everything Every lock on the door, flip my mattress, close the blinds, turn off the TV, and turn the phone off the hook, and I hid there for 48 hours. Oh, man. That was Chambersburg. She, so wait, how she, many teeth did she have? One. It was on the bottom. It looked like coral reef. It looked like sponge. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, it's gone by now. It was gone. It was gone. I might have, I might have knocked it out of there giving her a kiss. Wind, wind. If she would walk down the street and smile while she was moving, it would have been knocked out. Yo, have you heard from her since? Yeah. Heard okay. from her. I don't even know her name. Why would I hear from her? <laughs> heard from her. Like we exchanged information. Like like I gave her my number and my address. Yeah, we get together during the holidays. I'm gonna see her in a couple weeks. Dude, yeah. A here. gnarly rainstorm could knock her tooth out. A gnarly <laughs> rainstorm? I don't know. Wind could knock <laughs> it out. Maybe a change in the weather. It, it just just an angry smile. Driving in a convertible. Could knock it out. 
You think her in a convertible? A convertible. She couldn't afford a convertible. It was like a 1972 freaking Pinto. <laughs> a convertible. She's driving around in a soap truck or like just something. <laughs> she's not, not driving. She, she's living in a cardboard box. Damn. God bless her soul. I love you if you're listening. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> God bless your soul, Don, after that one. Man. Oh. That. I wonder if she ever like if seen what a toothbrush looks like. A toothbrush? <laughs> she'd have to look it up in the dictionary to go buy one. <laughs> it would literally she'd be really be using it instead of a teeth brush. <laughs> no, she she's not gonna touch with a toothbrush. toothbrush. She would have to take one of those water picks and put it on low just to breeze across the thing to not aggravate the veins holding it on. Oh. <laughs> The only thing holding that thing together right now is she probably put some epoxy in there because that thing was dead. Don, what kind of outfit did she have on? <laughs> oh, like I remember. She had one tooth. One yeah. goddamn. Do you think I could focus on anything else when I'm trying to shove my dick in sideways and see the one tooth? I don't know what she was wearing. She could have been wearing a freaking shawl and like leather boots. I don't care. She could have been wearing tarmac. I don't picture her. Shit. Picture her going to the dentist. The dentist would dentist? be Dentist? Like, Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> a dentist would be like, and. Okay. You're here it's for just, what? I don't, uh, do you want a job? <laughs> so how do they look? Well, your gums have gingivitis, but I don't really see any teeth. I see one tooth. I see shit stuck in the holes. And it's rotten from meth. Ew. Man, I was I was top notch back then. I know, man. You were in a bad place you, then, man. <laughs> was, was that when you were driving that red Mustang or that red uh, Trans Am? No, it was way before that. It was back when I was driving that that, yeah. that black Mustang I built out of junkyard parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what it was. Remember that, Brandon? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah, Bra Brandon, Brandon came to my house one day. I built a car out of junkyard parts. And I called it Brandon. We're in like ninth grade. He comes over. We go to Home Depot and, pick, and try and come up with a color that's the worst. And he comes up with shit-ass yellow. We go back to my house and paint my car with a roller. My parents walk out in the garage. There's paint everywhere. We're covered in paint. And we're painting my car with a roller. And then we put checkers on I drove to school with black. Black spray paint on the side says Ryan sucks on a yellow, yeah. canary yellow car. That was awesome. That's what I drove. Remember when you drove past Minus to wave uh, hi to your buddy <laughs> and then you slid in the leaves right into a tree? <laughs> I hit it so hard the headlights were facing each other. My finger got stuck between the windshield and the, steer and the steering wheel. So I couldn't get out. So I just had to sit there and take the embarrassment. Everybody stared at me. I couldn't get out because I was stuck in there. I'm just like, all right. And all these cars are going all slow. The thing's all smoking. 30 seconds before that. In my mind, I was the man. <laughs> I was like, this is the best car ever. This is the hottest shit on earth. Who was, who was the guy you were waving hi to? I was waving hi to Kevin. Just Kevin picture Priest. what Kevin was thinking. Like, you know, his buddies drive by. Like, Yo, man. Like, yeah, what's up, dude? Like, boom. Right through his <laughs> Like, you probably thought that you were like, trying to make him laugh or something. No, he didn't think I was trying to make him laugh. I pegged that thing. I was like two feet in the air on that tree. And he's just, he, he has his hand in the air. And I know you can't see me doing this on the, on the, on the radio, but he's got his hand in the air waving at me because I'm cruising past thinking I'm the coolest. And then he's just like, and his hand slowly slows down as it sees it flying into the tree. And then I hit the tree and his hand's just in the air. And now he's got a frown. His hand goes slowly back into his pocket and walks over to re recover me from the wreckage. Was, was the hood all steaming and stuff? The hood was off. The hood flew off. There was an engine showing. The headlights were facing each other. There was oil sprewing up onto, this, onto the windshield. And I'm stuck with my fucking middle finger stuck between the windshield and the steering wheel. That's the only thing that was holding me in. A finger. And I'm just wanting to run into the woods and just, you know, suck my thumb and cry. But I can't because I'm stuck in this wreckage. Uh, something I thought was the coolest thing yeah. 12 seconds earlier. Before the wreck, you were a legend in your own mind. <laughs> How did we even get started on this? So now, like, you really had to punch in with that, huh? <laughs> it's just so good, man. I can just make myself laugh. Really, I thought I, seriously, I was Burt Reynolds for a second, and all of a sudden I was like, that guy Screech. That was him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I kind of like Screech. <laughs> I, I could come with a better analogy, but I'm just not that funny. Uh, Ryan, well, your stories just uh, took us past the time of our show, so uh, there's some other show that's getting ready to start, so we need to end this. And Brandon, I pulled a prank call, call for you out of the vault, out of oh, CKY man. Volume 2, and this is the best phone call ever. Oh, which one? He c we called this random number, and it happened to be some uh. guy who was like, 
hung up. He was like in an IV or some shit, like in a hospital bed. No, and we, he, we were such dickheads at the time that, that he just decided, Brandon decided to play a doctor and say he was taking the wrong way. Oh, my piece. God. Dude, don't even play that one. Oh, this God. is Dr. Modern Art Prank Call on Radio Bam Series 28 Faction. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and goodbye. Uh -huh. Are you a doctor? Yes. Are you talking uh, about my condition? Yes. Are you okay? Uh, are you, are you're not Dr. Hunter, are you? Sir, I am Dr. Hunter, and Hannibal, and B.A. is coming, too. Huh? Are you okay? Has nurse has the nurse left you alone again? No, oh, well, let's go on. No, I'm only here for an hour. I'm all right. No, you're not going to be all right. Yeah. No. Where who, are you who, calling from? Now, who is there watching you? What? Who's there? You need some supervision if you're going to be lighting off those... You talk so fast! Talk so... You want to see how slow I can talk? Boy, I don't know. I just finished talking to Dr. Madra. Do you know him? This is Dr. Stevenson, Dr. Mark's comrade. Oh, oh, well, now, see, so you're talking a little slower, Stevenson. Yeah, well, I have Dr. Madra just what? told me he had a second medicine in reserve in case the one he gave me now for my bladder condition, if it didn't work. And I said I only took one pill and it worked beautifully. Shut up. <laughs> Listen. Hey? What? I'm, I was talking to my nurse. I'm sorry about that. I would never tell you to shut up. Now, listen, what did Dr. Matter tell you exactly about the prognosis that he had given you? Because we had a little problem with the medicine he prescribed. We didn't want you to take it yet. Have you taken anything for it? I, I took one pill of the what? that he prescribed. You took it already? Huh? You, no, you didn't take it yet, did you? The stuff Dr. Matter prescribed for you. I told him I took it. Oh, my Lord. All right, listen to me. Don't panic. Listen to me. You're going to need to call somebody to pick you up and get you over to the hospital. It's not serious. It's very serious. Which hospital? Get to the nearest one. What are you, where are you located? Matter of didn't tell me where you were located. <coughs> yeah, and I was, I was taken over to the hospital. Well, if you can get back to... Were you at the surgery center? Surgery clinic? No, I don't... Well, now, see, they're moving things back and forth over there. What color is a pussy? I don't know. I, I... Of course you don't know, because the medicine is getting to you. You're seeing psychedelic pussies everywhere because of the medicine. Da -na -na -na. I feel all right. No, well, you will feel all right until it sets in. That's why you're going to need to lay down, strap yourself in with Velcro shoes, and get justice immediately. Dr. Medrow should be there any minute. When he knocks at the door, yell, come in. I'm going to... I don't. I hope you're serious. There's not joking. Yeah, you. listen. I'm a doctor. Any other person, it would cost me. Now I just finished with doctor. Dun 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 you can leave now. It's Radio Bam. Radio Bam every Monday, seven Eastern, four Pacific. Email me now at Radio Bam. Why don't you uh, take a picture of your sweet white ass and send it on over to Radio Bam at Sirius-Radio.com. Call Radio Bam at eight seven seven Porn Bag. That's eight seven seven Porn Bag. Sweet dreams, Peapod. Bye everybody. See you next week. On Sirius Twenty Eight Faction. Later.